Um, it is now my pleasure uh, to turn over uh, the briefing uh, to our guest and to my colleague, uh, Vincent Martin, who heads the UN presence in Guinea, who is here to speak to you about uh, COVID-19 and Ebola and everything that you're doing to support, uh, to support the people of Guinea. So, uh, Vincent, please, you have the floor, and then we'll take some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stéphane. And good morning to everybody. So yes, I, I would like to uh, to give you a, a briefing on the situation here in, in Guinea, uh, which is facing two epidemics at the same time. So COVID-19 and Ebola that um, re-emerged uh, two weeks ago. In terms of uh, COVID-19, as you know, I mean, it has been uh, a major, it has a major impact on the uh, public health, but also on the economy of uh, many countries, including Guinea. Today, the situation is the, the following. We have uh, had 16,000 cases, but, but most of them uh, uh, were um, cured and treated, and we just have less than 100 uh, deaths uh, by COVID. But the thing is that with the, uh, the fatigue of the population, respecting social distanciation and so on and so forth, we can see that uh, the number of cases is, is, is rising. You know, it has been on the rise during the last uh, the last week, and at the same time, uh, two weeks ago, uh, we observed the uh, reemergence of Ebola. And uh, while COVID nineteen is taking place is uh, uh, is mainly concentrated and focused in the region of Conakry, the Ebola uh, outbreak took place in the far remote places of Nzerikori region, which is the far uh, southeast of Guinea which is um, uh, far away from uh, Conakry, 864 kilometers. It takes two days of, uh, of, uh, by road to reach uh, Zerikore. And, uh, and it is well connected to the uh, uh, neighboring countries like Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Liberia, and, uh, and Sierra Leone. So there is a high risk of spread of the disease uh, in Guinea, but also uh, in the neighboring countries, as we've seen uh, several years ago, during the uh, the uh, Ebola outbreak in 2014-2016, uh, uh, but we are in 2021, and things have changed a lot. And I wanted to highlight all the changes that uh, should make possible uh, the control of the disease rapidly. First of all, uh, the lessons were learned. Lessons were learned uh, in in Guinea and. Uh, I imagine also in the neighboring countries, in the way to handle such uh, an epidemic. Uh, we learned during the previous epidemic that uh, community engagement is absolutely essential, that uh, coordination must be strong and focused, and that uh, the response must be, must be rapid, uh, swift, and that we need to put a lot of uh, energy on, in contact tracing. And finally, we also learned that uh, we need to work with sociologists with anthropologists if you want to deal with such uh, diseases. So this experience has been built up within the uh, uh, health system in, uh, in Guinea. The um, National Agency for Health Security, which runs under the Ministry of Health, was really prepared to respond to this outbreak, plus the fact that we also had the COVID-19 uh, epidemic, so uh, they, they really had everything, uh, everything in place. So there is a strong leadership from this uh, National Agency for Health Security, uh, which is great. We've got human expertise uh, in Guinea, and uh, some of these expertise also uh, went to uh, uh, the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo for also helping in the Ebola outbreak uh, uh, the years before. The health infrastructures are still quite weak, so that's still one major issue in the country. Uh, but this is being being addressed. The second thing uh, that makes the situation different today is the uh, availability of vaccine. There was no vaccine uh, at the time of the 2014 uh, outbreak. Now there is a vaccine which is available. And uh, the vaccine, we were able to deliver the vaccine uh, in nine days after the notification of the disease. That is to say, WHO, uh, which is on the front line to uh, address this uh, epidemic situation, uh, mobilize the uh, the uh, the stock 
that was uh, available, and uh, 18, uh, no, uh, 11,000 doses arrived just nine days after the uh, notification of the uh, of the outbreak, and the vaccination has started, and we have 1,544 uh, people who have been vaccinated uh, so far in the epicenter uh, of the disease. Uh, third, I wanted to mention also the uh, UN reactivity and uh, flexibility and agility. We were the first one to arrive in the field, thanks to the uh, UN uh, flight that we had put into place, uh, not for Ebola, I must say, but we, had, uh, we didn't have the UNAS flight services established in Guinea, but since last year, um, under the uh, UN coordination, we have decided to reestablish the uh, humanitarian coordination platform, which had disappeared after the first epidemic of Ebola, and we thought that it was important to reestablish this uh, humanitarian coordination platform in case uh, any major event happens, and I think it was a good move to do that. And, uh, and second, we wanted to reestablish the uh, UN flight to be able to reach these places, such as in Zero Korea, uh, that need 48 hours to reach them, uh, and we make them very far away from uh, from the uh, capital of, uh, of Guinea. Uh, so we had planned all that in advance, and uh, we were able to uh, uh, to uh, uh, restart the UN flight on the, uh, I think it was on the 14th of February, that is to say just the day after the uh, official notification, and uh, I went to the field with this UN flight from uh, um, some government officials, uh, experts with NGOs uh, on Monday, just uh, uh, 24 hours after the notification, we were able to uh, uh, meet the communities, uh, understand, I mean, and get a feel of what was the situation uh, in the field, uh, talk to the authority, to the communities. I went to visit also the uh, uh, treatment and isolation center right away to see what was the condition in this center that uh, actually are treating uh, patients with uh, COVID and in another section they are treating patients with Ebola uh, in, a, in, a, in a space which is not, not very, very, uh, very big and that needs to be upgraded. So uh, the end, we were very fast in, in responding, being in the field, starting to bring uh, equipment uh, disinfection uh, material and equipment and all uh, sorts of things that were uh, that were that were readily available for the control of the disease, and um, and uh, and then we uh, we also were able to mobilize resources very uh, rapidly through the uh, Central Emergency Response Fund, the CERF. So we mobilized six million dollars for for Guinea, uh, and we are working on the on the full application for uh, uh, for de defining our interventions. Uh, in the uh, first line of um, of response uh, in terms of UN agencies, we've got, of course, WHO, which is uh, responsible for the uh, uh, incidents, uh, incident management, but, uh, but we also have uh, UNICEF, uh, IOM, and WFP. So these four agencies will be the one, will be the recipient for the $6 million from the CERF uh, for this very rapid response, immediate response, and we are working around the clock to, uh, uh, to define the interventions and start uh, uh, working on these interventions. And, um, and of course, there, there will be some dimensions which are more transversal, transversal like the FDA and so on, and that will be addressed by other agencies, including UNFPA. Uh, one thing which was also interesting in terms of uh, the UN agility uh, to address this issue was uh, uh, while we were in Zerikore, we were able to uh, uh, meet and see some of the uh, projects that have been funded by the uh, Peace Building Fund. Uh, that were uh, uh, operated and implemented uh, during the last two years for preventing conflict uh, in the situation of uh, tense uh, uh, elections. And we had presidential elections last year, and we had this project all running, and we had uh, been training uh, uh, young community leaders, women's group, uh, uh, moto taxi, who were all trained for preventing conflict in a context of uh, uh, political uh, instability or elections or civil unrest. And the fact is that uh, all these people who are uh, 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 well-trained for preventing conflict could be mobilized for I mean, working on this social mobilization and uh, communicating the right messages on, uh, and, and also fighting against fake news so that 
we can uh, ensure that uh, uh, this uh, community engagement I was mentioning before uh, comes from all, all parts of the of the response, including from the uh, actors who have been trained uh, in the uh, in the uh, arena of uh, peace and security. Uh, so, uh, as a conclusion, uh, I would say that uh, uh, we have uh, a good condition, a very good start responding to this epidemic. Uh, we really have an opportunity for stopping the spread of the disease uh, in uh, in the next month if everything goes well. The uh, uh, National Agency for Health Security is extremely responsive. There is a, a very good uh, leadership and coordination, uh, but they are still, uh, and, and the UN has been extremely uh, rapid to respond, to deploy in the field and to, uh, to align to the uh, National Response Plan. So we do have challenges, and I would like to mention a few of them before uh, we go to the, to the questions. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, although yes, we do are going in the right direction and we believe that there is a chance this can be stopped, uh, it's important that we uh, scale up all, all the actions and rapidly uh, because there is still, you can feel when you go to the field and Anna was there and I was talking to the people in the uh, uh, treatment center, there is still uh, anxiety, there is still uh, resistance, resistance to the uh, uh, well, understanding uh, really the epidemiological situation, is this if this is true, I mean, like for COVID, uh, you have, of course, all these conspiracies, conspiracy uh, theories. And uh, so there are a lot of tensions uh, and reluctancy uh, to really engage and fear uh, uh, for, for this disease. So it's very important to uh, uh, strengthen and ramp up this community uh, engagement, work with uh, anthropologists, and uh, making sure that uh, all the right messages come across uh, the population, uh, so that uh, uh, people uh, are part of the surveillance system. They, when there is a suspicion, they report back to the health authorities, and we don't miss any contacts because uh, the uh, contact tracing is absolutely uh, uh, critical. So that's one thing that I've observed when I was in the field and I was talking with our uh, the communities over there. Second thing, which is very important to uh, uh, to keep in mind, is that the vaccine alone is not enough. It's great that we have the vaccine. At uh, this time, uh, we are, uh, the vaccination uh, uh, campaign is going on. Uh, we are, uh, uh, I think we are, we are, I mean, the national authorities are doing a very good job uh, in this vaccination with 1,500 1, uh, or more uh, people who have been vaccinated, which is already uh, very good. But surveillance, surveillance is absolutely, absolutely key. And uh, today we just had uh, among the, uh, uh, so we have 17 17 cases today, 17 cases of Ebola today, uh, uh, just eight deaths today, which have been uh, 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 confirmed. Uh, however, uh, today we just had 10 suspicions. We just had 10 suspicions. And actually, it's important to, to receive more suspicions because having more suspicions means that the surveillance system is working. Uh, so uh, the WHO is working very hard in uh, strengthening the surveillance activity with the health authority so that all the uh, uh, you can identify all the new cases uh, you can identify all the uh, suspected cases and you don't have uh, any of these cases which are disappearing in the nature and actually uh, today in terms of contact tracing uh, yesterday we were at uh, 93 percent uh, uh, in in terms of uh, uh, following up this uh, the contact 93 percent and today we were just at 83. So uh, it means that uh, that, that fluctuates uh, every day. So the fact that we had uh, uh, a lower rate today doesn't mean that things aren't going well, but uh, it means that we need to put a lot of emphasis on uh, tracking tracking the, uh, the contacts and the contacts of contacts to make sure we don't miss anybody. The uh, two other things I wanted to mention uh, before uh, closing is the uh, food Food is a very important, food assistance is very important. Uh, uh, just to consider that uh, food insecurity has been really on the rise during the last year uh, in Guinea. We just had uh, 72,000 uh, people suffering from uh, uh, very severe food insecurity uh, in 2019. This number uh, reached uh, 500 and uh, 600, uh, five, 500,000 uh, people in 2020. And here, if we don't do anything, by June, we will have 600, uh, 650,000. 
uh, people suffering from uh, severe food insecurity. And of course, because uh, zero growth is in a far remote place, that's definitely a, a region where uh, we need to strengthen the assistance in terms of uh, addressing this food security problem. And this was before the Ebola outbreak and mainly driven by, so by COVID. Uh, so <clears throat> providing, uh, strengthening food security is one, one area which is very important, but also providing food assistance in the places which are locked down is extremely important. I visited uh, Bueke, which is the, the epicenter of the disease where you have the, uh, the disease which started basically, uh, and, uh, and people were really asking for, if they were uh, to be confined, uh, they were very clear that, uh, and, and the, uh, the police commissioner and so on, they were very clear that we needed to uh, uh, ramp up our uh, contribution uh, in terms of, uh, of food assistance. And the uh, dimensions of uh, securing the UN flight also is extremely important. We had difficulty to uh, mobilize resources for establishing this uh, service, but it's absolutely critical. And we've seen it during the last two weeks. The UN response has been extremely uh, uh, rapid uh, because because we had the UN flight which was prepared to reach these places, but we do need to, uh, to mobilize more resources on that. Finally, uh, one last point on the monitoring the movement and the work which is being done by IOM, which is extremely important. Uh, they have started to establish checkpoints around the epicenter, but also at the borders area. Uh, this also has to be uh, uh, strengthened and scaled up, and this will be done mainly through the CERF. But, uh, but some additional resources uh, are needed. Uh, overall, the national plan, there is a uh, uh, Ebola response plan of uh, $45 million, and the gap for funding is $22 million. And the UN system uh, also developed its own plan, and we do have a, a gap of uh, around $12 million. And in this response plan, uh, we have this uh, uh, rapid response, the immediate response that. Uh, we need to address absolutely right now, but we also have all the dimensions of uh, food security I was mentioning, but also continuity of, uh, uh, of services, which is absolutely critical in this uh, kind of situation. So um, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to stop here and uh, thank, I'm, uh, thank, ready for questions. Thank you. Uh, Edie Letter, Associated Press, Edie. Thank you very much on behalf of the United Nations Thanks. Correspondents Association. Thank you for doing this briefing. Um, as I recall from the past major Ebola outbreak involving the three countries, um, there were health workers killed because of uh, suspicions, anger at what happened. Um, I know you talked about calling in anthropologists and uh, trying to address this issue, but um, have things changed enough in those rural areas to actually get uh, people to realize that uh, they need um, assistance in dealing with this disease? And have there been any reported cases in the neighboring countries? Thank you. Vincent, please go ahead. OK, thank you very much. Yes, it's, it's a very important question. Uh, things have changed. Things have changed. And also because we had COVID in between and this community engagement has me also at, at the heart of this uh, uh, COVID response. But, but uh, when I was there, when I was uh, uh, traveling in Gweke, in, uh, in Zerikore, I could still feel some tensions. And, uh, and you, you, you can see that uh, uh, you have to be extremely careful and that uh, we shouldn't repeat the mistakes from uh, uh, 2014 epidemic, which was uh, also arriving you know, with force, with uh, uh, sometimes military forces or you know, all these people uh, who are dressed in uh, protective uh, equipment, which is very scary for the population. So that's something we've learned. And I was talking to one of uh, my colleagues, an anthropologist who was just coming back from the field uh, yesterday, and he spent few a few days in the epicenter, and he told me that uh, uh, the tension is there. The tension is there, it means that we have to be extremely careful. Uh, this could lead to some violence. This could lead to violence, definitely. Uh, and that's why... Uh, this uh, uh, community, community sensitization, the fact that uh, I was mentioning 
uh, we can mobilize the people who have uh, trained on the uh, conflict prevention through our peace building fund uh, will be, I think, uh, extremely useful for uh, avoiding and preventing an escalation uh, in the violence. So in a nutshell, yes, it is there, but uh, we are putting all the efforts to avoid such a situation to, uh, uh, to repeat. Uh, in terms of uh, neighboring countries, there have been no cases detected in the neighboring countries, but the surveillance has been, of course, strengthened in all the neighboring countries, uh, Mali, uh, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, they have been uh, uh, strengthening the monitoring at the border, and they, they do have uh, a few suspicions, which is also very good, because uh, uh, you, it's important to, uh, to detect uh, suspected cases, but there have been no uh, confirmed cases so far. Al Jazeera? Um, yes. Um, uh... In terms of what you need right now, you talked about the money shortfall. What would be top of your list that you need right now? Um, and. Do you feel in any way the fact that the world is dealing with a pandemic um, and the WHO and the UN and everyone's focus is on that, that it is harder um, to mobilize the resources you need for Ebola? Yeah, I, I think yeah, the, 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 the short answer is yeah, yes, I hope to mobilize uh, resources. Uh, even the, the donor, com donor community here uh, in Conakry is uh, 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 spreading thin in terms of uh, responding to COVID and now there is Ebola. So uh, it's, it's challenging from a uh, 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 resource mobilization perspective. It's challenging because uh, also we have to be on two fronts at the same time while also addressing more uh, long-term development issues. We are really uh, helping the government with the uh, uh, vaccina vaccination deployment for uh, COVID-19. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we are uh, uh, deploying the vaccine for, for Ebola. So uh, very complex in terms of human resources, uh, of uh, uh, being able to be on these different fronts at the same time and on mobilizing resources. What comes on top of my mind for the resources, um, uh, the, the surveillance part is extremely important. This is what I was uh, mentioning. And to do surveillance, to do tracing uh, back and forth back and forward of the uh, of the contacts uh, together with sensitizing the population uh, with the uh, the right level of granularity and uh, and uh, a number of people who can do that is is key and i think is on top of the list of who and unicef so that's something we need resources for uh, specifically specifically uh, for that so that we don't miss contacts and we don't uh, end up with a situation that was mentioned by the previous speaker of, uh, of violences and uh, hatred and, and fake news that could uh, rise uh, very quickly. My second, uh, second on my on my priority list is definitely uh, uh, food assistance and uh, mobility, being able to maintain the UN flight, which again, you know, uh, I was preparing for that last year. For I mean, it was just, I've been working on emergency situations, so I thought it was uh, a weakness that we didn't have the UN flights in a country where uh, these places are extremely remote and, and there are uh, issues to address. And when I was knocking at the doors of the different uh, uh, different donors saying, uh, we need to do that because otherwise these places are left unattended and they are at the borders area of uh, countries such as Liberia, Sierra Leone, and so, but also in, with Mali. Where you could have you you, you know the uh, the threat of uh, terrorism coming from the north. Uh, so I've been I have had a lot of difficulties to uh, find resources to fund the UN flight. And actually, uh, the first flight was kind of pre-financed by the coordination because we wanted to demonstrate the value of doing it. And actually, for the last two weeks, the flight has been going uh, uh, up and down to Nzerikore every day. And everybody sees how important it is. But not everybody is ready to uh, to commit to it. So that's uh, that's one critical uh, issue. Thank you, uh, Philippe Rater, AFP. Philippe. Merci, merci. Je vais vous poser ma question en, en français, et si vous pouvez répondre en français, je, je veux bien aussi. Euh, je voudrais revenir sur le bilan euh, d'Ebola en Guinée. Si j'ai bien compris, c'est 1700 cas euh, confirmés et 10 euh, suspicions, c'est ça? 
Et non, 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 désolé. Ah bon. Bon, bah, si, vous pouvez sur le bilan, si vous pouvez revenir sur le bilan euh, complet sur le, la Guinée, je veux bien. Est-ce qu'il y a eu des morts Et Je ne parle que ouais. d'Ebola, hein, je ne parle pas de, de Covid, ouais. c'est que Ebola. Et puis ma deuxième question, c'est que vous avez euh, dit qu'il y avait un risque élevé, une étendue de l'épidémie de Ebola euh, dans les pays euh, voisins. Vous avez cité quatre pays. Quels sont les pays les plus euh, à même d'être touchés par, le, par une extension de, de l'épidémie Merci. Très bien. Donc, euh, sur les cas où il faut que je sois précis, euh, il y a euh, aujourd'hui, il y a 17 cas. Il y a 17 cas à Ebola. Euh, dans ces 17 cas, on en a 13 qui sont confirmés par diagnostic de laboratoire et 4 qui correspondent à des décès mais qui sont probablement liés à Ebola. Donc c'est comme ça qu'on c'est comme ça qu'on les compte. Euh, il des décès, vous avez dit des décès, quatre décès. Voilà. En fait, en, en tout il y a huit décès. En tout il y a huit décès, d'accord. Mais dans les huit décès, il y a quatre décès probables liés à la maladie. Il y a aussi ces décès qui n'ont pas été confirmés parce que les gens ont été enterrés déjà. Mais c'est euh, ils ont été identifiés comme des décès Ebola. Donc ça nous fait en tout, euh, donc, en tout on a on a huit décès pour l'instant et on a 17 euh, 17 cas euh, de, euh, de Ebola. On a aujourd'hui il y avait 10 alertes enregistrées, euh, deux personnes décédées, on va voir si c'est confirmé, et huit personnes vivantes sur lesquelles les tests euh, sont en cours. On et est en train de suivre. Ça, c'est où C'est dans toute la Guinée, les, les 17 cas non, non, tout, tout ça, c'est à Nzéré-Coré. Tout ça, c'est à nzéré Ça ne s'est pas encore, ça n'est pas sorti de nzéré -Coré. Ça n'est pas sorti de cette région forestière. Il y a une personne, il y a une personne qui était en contact avec la, la dame qui, a, qui est décédée en, au début, qui était partie à Conakry, mais cette personne-là, euh, c'était un contact. Elle a été isolée, traitée, et elle n'a pas développé les symptômes de la maladie. Donc, il ne se passe rien à l'extérieur de cette zone-là. Tout est confiné dans la zone et on, a, on est en train de... Enfin, les, les, les autorités sont en train de suivre 523 contacts. 523 contacts. Par contre, ce que je mentionnais, c'est qu'il y a 1544 personnes vaccinées au jour d'hier, à la date d'hier. 1544 personnes vaccinées. Sachant qu'on a, on a reçu euh, donc euh, 11 000 doses de vaccins. Voilà. C'est oui, voilà. Ebola. Donc, 1544 personnes vaccinées pour Ebola. Et ce qui est un bon taux de vaccination, parce que la stratégie de vaccination, c'est de vacciner les gens qui étaient en contact. C'est une vaccination en anneaux. Donc, vacciner les gens qui sont en contact. Et, euh, euh, et on, peut, on, on peut considérer, euh, enfin, vacciner, enfin, plus que les gens qui sont en contact. C'est-à-dire qu'on peut considérer qu'une euh, une personne pourrait euh, en infecter euh, 100. Donc, il fallait vacciner. Euh, euh, il fallait vacciner 10 fois le nombre de personnes qui ont été euh, infectées. Donc là, on a 4, 17 cas à peu près. On pourrait dire qu'il pourrait infecter 1700 cas. Et donc, un, il faut vacciner à peu près cette, cette quantité de personnes. Or, aujourd'hui, deux semaines après le début de l'épidémie, on a 1500, 1600 personnes qui ont été vaccinées quasiment. Donc voilà la situation. Donc ça a commencé comme ça en 2014. Sauf qu'en euh, laissant les choses euh, évoluer et si on tarde à répondre, après, ça se répand au niveau national et au niveau régional. Le, le, le risk assessment que j'ai mentionné, c'est celui qui a été fait par euh, WHO. Ils ont fait un, un grading, un rating de, uh, uh, du risque. Et le risque a été jugé comme élevé de se uh, répandre, de se disséminer au sein de la Guinée, et, uh, ou, ou très élevé, et élevé de se disséminer dans la région, dans les, dans les, dans les pays voisins. Donc ça, c'est l'évaluation le, euh, le, le, du risque faite par WHO, qui est relativement claire. Euh, Et dans ces, pays voisins, dans ces pays voisins, parmi les quatre, est-ce qu'il y en a qui sont plus susceptibles que d'autres Oui, oui. Bah déjà sur, sur, la base, sur la base de ce qu'on a vécu de 2014 à 2007, euh, le, les principaux cas euh, ont tourné entre euh, Guinée, Sierra Leone et Liberia. Donc on peut déjà dire que Liberia et Sierra Leone sont très, très à risque. À partir de là, la, la Côte d'Ivoire est, est, est aussi proche que le Libéria. Donc le, le, la Côte d'Ivoire est aussi à risque. Et je dirais, peut-être dans une moindre mesure, euh, le Mali, mais c'est toujours possible avec les mouvements de personnes. Donc c'est vraiment les trois pays euh, les, les plus à risque d'avoir de, des cas. D'accord, merci. 
Uh, Vincent, thank, thank you very much. What would be helpful is if you could send us sort of a one-pager with the numbers, the cases, and because I, so to so to make sure there's no confusion in in the numbers, that would be helpful. We'll distribute it to the media here. Sure, I will. Yeah. Okay, uh, Vincent, merci, merci beaucoup uh, à vous. Bon courage, bonne continuation, and uh, happy weekend to all of you. Take care. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir.